Hi, everyone. Welcome, Billy. How's it going, Cos? Good. Yeah, we was uh, starting the recording and that we were just waiting for you. So let's see uh, if he's ready and go through the spill. And OK, Keith is here. Marissa, ready when you are. You want me to give the? Yep. OK, you, well, you welcome, everyone. You should tape it. I should tape it. No, it would be more more heartache, heartache to to um, play a video, probably. Anyways, well, welcome everyone. If this is your first time joining us at one of Community Board's virtual committee meetings, you'll notice that you're muted, and you're going to stay muted throughout the duration of the meeting. Um, following each uh, agenda item, co-chairs will call on members of the public who wish to speak. If you would like to participate, please go to the reactions icon on your screen and press the raise hand button there. It's not the wave or the thumbs up, those will disappear. Only press the raise hand button once. If you press it a second time, your hand will go back down. If you're calling in from the phone, it's star nine to raise your hand and star six to unmute whenever you're called on. Be on the lookout for a prompt asking you to confirm unmuting once the co-chairs call on you. If you're having problems, the chat is available for technical support only to help with the Zoom software. It is not to ask questions of any of our presenters or co-chairs. They will never see those chats. If you're using an older version of Zoom, you'll need to go to the participants section where you'll find the raise hand feature there. And finally, we please encourage, we encourage you not to raise your actual hand or wave at the screen. Uh, there's a lot of folks here and we may miss you. So chat me if you're having problems, I'm here to help. And I'll hand it over to Kaz and Billy and they can get their meeting started. Okay, terrific. Thanks, Will. Thanks everybody for joining. And uh, today we've got uh, Marissa Yanni from DSNY, uh, Julie Menon, um, is she? Do we see Julie on or she will be here? And we also see Keith, who's been very busy today. And oh, we also have Matt from the uh, one of the bids, the Madison Avenue bids. And I think today we just want some information and clarifications on what some of the local residents want from DSNY and from us. Um, so I welcome all. Uh, Billy, do you have anything else? Yeah, I'll just say briefly, um, this is the first meeting of sanitation and zone committee. This was traditionally a committee with the environment committee, but for various reasons, including I think, every, we've all observed how important sanitation is to our quality of life in the neighborhood. Um, it's been decided to make this its own committee. And I'm really excited um, to sort of start this journey with you all because I think we all have our hands full. There's a lot of work ahead of us, tons of issues facing uh, the Upper East Side and the city as a whole with regards to sanitation, both litter pickup, recycling, composting, uh, new programs potentially with how we uh, address trash bags that pile up on our streets and on our sidewalks. So there's a lot of work to be done. And it's one of the reasons why we're excited to be joined by both of our council members today, plus DSNY to talk about you know, what our priorities for 2022 should look like and how we can partner with the bids and small businesses and our neighbors to uh, craft that agenda. Because the community board, as many of you know, is gonna play an outsized role in letting the city know, letting our elected officials know, you know, what is that we want? What do we want the budget to look like? What sort of services do we want to look like? And crucially, we need to work with all of you in the community to know what it is that you want on your blocks, um, outside your businesses in terms of trash pickup, litter pickup, recycling, and composting. So really important issues. And I know it's an unusual time, 4 p.m. We're hoping to meet in the future, I think, Kaz, at 6.30. So really grateful that you all could make it um, now during the afternoon. Um, but yeah, that's, that's all I wanted to start off with. Okay, so maybe we should start off with uh, the 
hierarchy with um, should can we have Keith go first since he's the the biggest honcho in the room? I'm the smallest honcho in the room, but thank you for for that. Uh, and, and it's been like an afternoon with CBA here, so I appreciate it. And of course, um, I want to say thank you to for doing this. I think it's great you guys are have a committee on this. And I kind of like the four o'clock afternoon meetings, but uh, I know it's not sustainable. Um, and of course, I. We have uh, both Councilmember Menon and her team here. I see we have a representative for Assembly Member C. Wright, and uh, I always have to give a shout out to both Matt and and Rob, the two bids here, who make our lives a lot easier when it comes to sanitation, cleanliness, and quality of life. And just want to say thank you for and I know and by the way and, and many of our community partners here too, who do a lot of efforts around beautification, trash pickup, sanitation, and making our new neighborhoods. Uh, stay clean. So thank you to everyone for uh, the work you do in chipping in. It's undoubtedly one of the areas that we've seen a lot of a, a major uptick in uh, complaints and uh, a lot of desire for more attention over the last two years of sanitation, graffiti, cleanliness. Um, as many of you know, there was a cutback to some of the resources around sanitation during the budget two years ago. And we've seen obviously some announcements around changes to both sanitation and composting as part of this budget, something that I'd like to see that we push back to normal levels. Um, and so we have a desperate need to stay invested in these, in these uh, areas and also to make sure that we are doing our jobs in terms of identifying the areas of the highest need, committing and, and, and um, bringing resources to those areas and uh, working with our partners in Department of Sanitation, community partners, bids, and some of the supplemental services that we have to make sure we're directing those to the right places based on complaints and also based on where we identify need. Um, you know, ironically enough, there are areas where I get asked people get asked people to say, can you take away a trash can because it's becoming an issue around cleanliness? And there's other areas where people say, I need you to put more trash cans and services here because we're uh, really needed. So the needs in every part of the district definitely differ and change, but what we are able to do here is a, a direct the sanitation folks to uh, do extra pickups or try to touch different areas uh, as needed. I, my office funds a service called ACE, which is a supplemental service. We can have them go and hit out different areas. We have hosted a number of issues around um, uh, sort of events around you know, pickup, graffiti removal with a lot of our partners on the Upper East Side. And of course, more inherent to this is making sure that we are funding and resourcing these services in the appropriate way. Um, so um, this budget, we have to make sure we keep the services at the appropriate level and then uh, for trash pickup. But when we talk about um, other things that I like, composting, recycling, we have to make sure we're not also you know, decimating those services. We need them get to get them restored to areas like CB8 and we need to make sure that we're uh, looking at this comprehensively. So. Uh, I'll end there, but just want to say thank you for having me and uh, looking forward to the discussion. Okay, I guess we can go to Julie next. Welcome, Julie. You're in the hot seat. Thank you so much. It took me a minute to unmute. Thank you so much. It's great to see everyone at CB8. It's great to see my colleague, Council Member Powers. And I'm so excited to be at this committee meeting. I care very much about sanitation issues. It's actually, I just want to mention the number one constituent issue that I hear from is actually on sanitation issues. So I think that really talks to the importance of uh, this issue. So you might have seen in the past couple of weeks, I announced a couple of different sanitation issues I've been working on. First of all, I allocated $120,000 of my discretionary budget to increase to four times a day um, pickup uh, during the week, which is a you know, big improvement in this district. I also announced that after a 10 year battle on East 86th Street, which the East 86th Street Association had waged to get mid litter baskets, we were able to get uh, eight um, mid block baskets. So you might see them on 86th Street. So I'm very proud of that. And I think that's a big difference um, in that area of the neighborhood. A couple things on the budget. So the sanitation budget is slightly under $2 billion. As you may know, the mayor is cutting approximately 100 million of that to get a budget of about 1.8 billion in his prelim budget. Uh, but significantly, there is uh, $20 million in cuts to the composting program, which I'm definitely against. I think 
composting is incredibly important um, for our community, for our city as a whole. I'm on the council sanitation committee, so I look forward to the budget hearing on that and plan to be a very vocal voice against those cuts, just so you know that. I mean, obviously there are a lot of other sanitation issues uh, to note, but certainly clean curbs. Um, I'm a big fan of containerized waste. I think we need to really focus on containerized waste as a way to improve our sanitation issues and keep our streets cleaner. Um, street cleaning during the pandemic, we moved from twice a week street cleaning to once. And since then there has been, and I'm sure everyone's opinion, a, a real change and noticeable difference for the worse. So we need to consider seriously returning to twice a week street cleaning. Otherwise the streets end up being dirty. Um, outdoor dining sheds, obviously another sanitation issue. We, I said on the consumer affairs committee, we had an eight hour hearing as you probably know, and I know many of you were there, but certainly there's sanitation issues um, that are associated with outdoor dining and they need to be addressed. And I'm a strong believer that they need to be part of any kind of permanent program. So we make sure that we're dealing with that. And then um, lastly, commercial carting reforms and commercial waste zones. So we are in the midst of RFPs for the commercial waste zone reforms. This is critical to improving the safety of that industry. I used to serve on the Business Integrity Commission and was a commissioner on there. You know, this is really important that we make sure we have these reforms in our carding industry to root out fraud, abuse, waste, all sorts of things that have been happening in the past. And we also want to move towards more affordability and a more reliable trash collection service. So those are just some of the issues that I wanted to raise and really look forward to working very closely with this committee. Thank you. Good, thank you. Um, maybe we can hear from uh, Marissa uh, at the moment. She's going to be at the, uh, you know, at the receiving end of all these budget cuts, and you know, maybe they can. She can let us know what they they intend to do. Hey everybody! Thank you so much, Cause, uh, for introducing me. Um, well, sh I have a little short presentation for everybody just to go over some updates. Will, would you like me to share my screen? Go ahead, you can do that now. Okay, great, thank you. I just wanna be sure. We're gonna do this one. Sorry, it takes. Can everyone see my presentation? Yep. Okay, good, just wanna be sure. Um, uno momento. Okay, great. Can everyone see that first slide? It looks up funny because I have two slides. Okay. Yep. So just to talk a little bit about um, some updates from sanitation. Thank you so much, Councilmember Powers and Councilmember Menon for actually stealing some of my updates, but I will uh, let that go for now. <laughs> um, okay, let's get cracking. So first up with some garbage collection in the districts, as Councilmember Menon mentioned, we have mid baskets on East 86th Street after that long and tumultuous fight. Luckily, I have not been at sanitation for that long, so I can't say I was fully part of it. Um, so very excited to have that. And I think it's going to give a lot of relief to the block and to the districts, which should be really great. Um, something new for those that might be doing adopt a basket, um, you're going to be instructed to call 3-1 run um, to get your basket liner. So if anyone you know that's doing that, you don't need to reach out to the local district. You can actually just call 3-1-1 and you'll be able to get all the liners that you need. If you know anybody that does do adopt a basket, let me know if you uh, if they have any issues. I'm happy to help them. Regarding just some, just wanted to add some of the holidays that come up. We just had Lincoln's birthday on Saturday. Monday was President's Day. These are just some days to look ahead to some holidays um, for when we're not going to have any collection. The next one isn't until Memorial Day. So luckily everyone's pretty much safe until the end of May, which is always helpful. So hopefully we won't have any issues and praying there's no more snow. Um, next up, there's actually something new that's in the pipeline, some building waste management plans for certain buildings. This takes effect on April 1st, so coming up very soon. This is where um, owners or managing agents of any new multiple dwelling uh, buildings, they need to submit a waste management plan and it's subject to approval by DSMY. So we're very excited about that, which is to help them figure out how they're managing their waste, where they're putting it, uh, what's the signage for residents, and this is for any units that are 150 more, have 150 units or more. That's something that's definitely gonna be a big part of Manhattan's life. Um, and I would assume in CB8 as well, because um, there's so many larger residential buildings. So just something to keep in mind. Um, and Will, if you know anybody that needs more information about this, I have some other, um, we're still working out what we're sending folks. Um, 
but I do have some preliminary information. If you need it, do let me know. Um, and just to keep this in mind um, as any new buildings are coming forward or if they present anything to the community board. Next up is just a little bit about recycling. Um, we do have our safe disposal events um, that should be starting up in the spring. And this is where you can bring your solvent, automotive, flammables, or electronics. And then of course, our drop-off sites are every weekend um, at your, um, in Manhattan, that's down at Pier 36, um, which is down in CB3. So just to keep this in mind, um, I don't know if this will change due to the budget constraints um, that are coming down the pipeline, but I'm hoping that by the spring and then June, this will still happen um, and we'll be able to still have this opportunity for folks to drop off all their harmful waste. Marissa, may, may I interrupt you briefly? It, sure. It's, it looks like on your presentation, there's something um, sort of live captions and subtitles icon. Oh, I'm sorry. Maybe you've locked in the last couple of bullets. No, no worries. Is that okay Thank now? You. Yeah, perfect. I Thanks. have two screens in my office, so I have no idea. I'm only looking at one. <laughs> I didn't even see that. Thank you very much. Okay. There's a new little game that our Sanitation Foundation came up with. Um, it's called Follow Your Waste. If you know any, um, it's really great for students. We also have it in three languages, English, Spanish, and Chinese. Um, if you know any teachers or educators that would like to, um, to, to use this, it's really cool. You help pick something um, and you follow where it goes um, in kind of the trash life cycle. Um, I did send this presentation to Will, so this link um, is available. Um, and Will can always send it out to folks. I don't wanna go through all of it now, um, but there it is <laughs> for you. And it's really cute. And you actually see pictures of actual sanitation workers and it's voiced by actual folks that work at sanitation. So really great for any, um, any educators that you know, or if anybody at a next meeting you wanna use it, um, just for anybody in the community that's kind of connected with youth or anyone that's really um, into really cute garbage pictures, um, they should totally get out. look at this. So something that Councilman Menning kind of spoke about for a moment is the current curbside composting service. So as of right now, the expansion outside of the original community boards, which I'll list in a second, is paused until further notice, um, kind of just going off of the mayor's preliminary budget. We are always hopeful that changes, but um, as of right now, that's paused. Um, that does mean we won't be expanding anywhere new. So the current districts are Brooklyn, one, two, six, and seven, Manhattan six and seven, and Bronx eight. So unfortunately, that does not include Manhattan eight hoping that that will change. There has been a lot of um, signups in all of Manhattan, um, but definitely in Manhattan 8 as well. So we're just hoping that does expand. Um, we have been doing it on a rolling basis and the goal was to actually start up with new districts starting in April, actually. Um, then we got the news. So please bear with us as we're seeing the changes that are coming from the mayor's side and seeing what is getting done. We're, we're in the heat of budget season, getting really into it as the council members will let you know. A lot of hearings are gonna be happening, a lot of BNT meetings. So just trying to see what, how that will affect us in the long run. Please know we do have our, um, our drop-off food scrap sites, which you can actually go to nyc.gov slash drop food scraps to find one near you if you wanna to continue to, to compost or you just don't wanna wait anymore for the curbside service to start. Let me know if you know of any additional partners that would like to open up a new site. Could definitely, definitely connect you with our organics team um, at our Bureau of Recycling and Sustainability. So let me know if you also can't find one, if you have any issues, um, happy to help just to make it easier for folks to drop off their compost and their organic material as best as possible. There also was an ask um, just to discuss the snow plan for Manhattan. So I have a couple of just little snippets about that. Um, hoping snow is well in our past, but March is always pretty finicky, um, so we shall see. And this is something that's also available on our website. Do let me know if, um, if someone needs the link for that. Um, I know in the chat I can only talk to, um, the, do a direct message, but if anyone needs it, um, Cause has my email address, you can definitely let me know if you need that link. Um, I'm definitely happy to send that out to you. But oh, this is just kind of some, some basics when um, we have forecast for two or more inches. That's when we transition into two 12 hour shifts, 7A to 7P, then 7P to 7A. Salt spreaders will begin to mobilize once there's the first bit of 
frozen precipitation hits the ground, plowing will begin once we exceed two inches. Otherwise, we will just be scraping the street and the tar. So it really will just be a horrible sound. Um, so we do wait for those two inches. We also recruit snow laborers with DOT to help with the bus stops, the crosswalks, and other pedestrian infrastructure. Um, we added additional skid steers, which, um, which help us with the crosswalks, bus stops, and for the bike lanes as well, which has been pretty successful in our past, um, excuse me, our past storm that happened at the end of January. Um, and we've acquired 30 new pieces of equipment to help us clear all the snow. Um, and of course, if you ever see some areas that need extra love, you know, always reach out to me and I'll be happy to pass that on um, if there's something that was missed or just something needs some addition. Just a couple of numbers, just so you can see kind of your personnel and equipment specifically for CB8. You have one superintendent, of course, you have six supervisors, 65 sanitation workers, um, and just a couple of other equipment that you have, large spreaders are five, those plowable trucks, 53. You have one skid steer, um, which was pretty helpful this year, um, and front end loaders. So just you, you have a good chunk of equipment here for CV8. Moving on to our Clean Curves program, which I was asked to discuss a little bit. Um, so the program is still in the RFP process. Um, we're looking at any really bids um, like that that want to um, participate in the program. The containers need to be a certain size and be some certain specs for us. Um, most of them are gonna be on the street. Um, I have not seen yes yet which ones would be on the sidewalk, but we're still waiting. None have been on the street yet. So none have hit live um, yet this program. So we're still waiting to get through some more of those specifics about that. But this is just an overview of what the specifications are for installing, purchasing and maintaining um, the containers. And then any questions, which I think we do have a question already. Um, yeah, I think we're going to have, listening to the three of you, I think there's going to be a lot of questions. Um, but I think in the meantime, if maybe we can hear from the, uh, uh, the bids that are available, if you can raise your hand so we we'll, can see you, make it easier for him to see you and he can unmute you and we can hear from you. Robin, maybe you can both are unmuted. Um, <laughs> oh, for sure, why not? Uh, hi, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Matt Bauer. I'm the president of the Madison Avenue Business Improvement District. And uh, we, uh, as many of the other of the 76 bids in New York City, uh, supplement the work of the New York State Department of Sanitation for our respective areas. We cover Madison Avenue and its adjacent uh, side streets from 57th to 86th Street. So we are, we're entirely uh, from 59th Street North within Community Board uh, 8. Uh, we invest uh, nearly a half million dollars a year uh, in sanitation services for, uh, for our district. Uh, like many of our bid colleagues, we sweep the sidewalks, uh, not only in, in the curb, 18 inches into the curb, uh, we reline trash cans that are, are, are full. Uh, we, uh, as you heard from sanitation, we also, uh, during snowstorms, we remove snow from the crosswalks, uh, bus stops, and fire hydrants uh, throughout the district. Um, you know, some of the things that we also deal with are, you know, when dog droppings happen on the avenue, which happens a lot. Uh, it actually even has its own code word, which is a situation. So if you hear there's a situation on Madison, it's a dog dropping. So we, we clean those up. We clean those up. And uh, since the beginning of the pandemic, uh, we've been sanitizing all the street furniture within our district. So every day, our Glean team uh, uh, uses uh, ammonia bleach to clean off uh, all of the mailboxes, the muni meters in the district, um, and other, our own news boxes, uh, the buttons that you push when you cross the street. Um, we do all those things to, uh, to sanitize uh, every day, 365 days uh, a year. Uh, and um, yeah, so we're, we, we work well, very closely with the Department of Sanitation and Manhattan District 8s. 
uh, superintendent. So whenever there's an issue, we reach out to District 8 and of course to uh, Will and uh, the staff of Community Board 8, which have been terrific in helping us anytime there's a bigger issue uh, here. And as well as to, we've also had issues that we've reached out to our council member, Keith Powers, and he's helped us out with a variety of issues as well. Um, so anyway, it's a great partnership. Rob. Okay, thanks, man. Hi, I'm Rob Burns. I'm president of the East Midtown Partnership. Uh, which covers all or part of 48 blocks of, of East Midtown. Uh, and then CV8, uh, CV8, that would include a lot of the area between 59th and 63rd Street. We do what Matt does. Uh, I've got about a $1 million a year into street sanitation. It's uh, We sweep uh, empty trash can liners twice a day. Uh, we, in the winter, our guys are out there shoveling, uh, de-icing, uh, including on the Park Avenue medians up to 61st Street in front of the Regency. <clears throat> um, and uh, yeah, and exactly, when, when the pandemic hit, our crews immediately shifted to uh, a heavy emphasis on uh, sanitation, act, or on, on disinfecting uh, street furniture and otherwise protecting the public safety. So, and, and we have the same kind of working relationship again with DSNY, with, uh, with, with, with our three community boards, in, in my case, uh, and of course, a council member. So, um, you know, we're, I should add one thing, we're in our, uh, we just began our 20th year. And we started, when we started in 2002, the reason we started was because the then board of directors uh, it was actually kind of a limited vision, frankly. They just wanted sanitation. So that was the first service we rolled out. The minute we had a contract signed with the city of New York and we received money, uh, we rolled out our sanitation services within uh, two weeks. And we've kept going, obviously, since then. Uh, we contract with the Doe Fund, as does Matt. Uh, and, uh, you know, what? Even, even though our charge in the communities expanded, we still consider sanitation the most important thing we can do out there. So thank you. And just think, just, just the one thing, just to make sure those of you who are not familiar with business improvement districts, our funding comes from a special assessment on property owners within the district. Tax, commercial, there are no tax dollars, right. commercial property owners within the district. So uh, uh, there is, this is not uh, from uh, tax dollars. It right. goes directly from assessments from property owners within the district. Nice. Okay, I guess um, maybe we can go to the public for uh, questions to any of the five uh, speakers. Um, let's take, um, who's first, Evelyn? Go ahead and unmute. Star six, go ahead. Oh, hi, good, e good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much, everybody that works for sanitation. You really do an incredible job. I actually worked for the sanitation department at one point under Norman Steisel, but that's a long time ago. Um, um, so I have a question with snow removal on Park Avenue, which is always fantastic. However, if you happen to be parked on Park Avenue on the east side of the street, you get nailed. And we all know that because that's where the plows are, you know, Anyway, the, the plows go, I, very fast question. There is a medium on Park Avenue all the way up. Is there any way that you could get snow blowers to remove the snow um, and blow it onto the medium instead of pushing it onto the cars? We just, uh, you know, after my 10th hour shoveling, uh, I turned to somebody and they said, snow blowers. And I said, oh, well, they use that. Well, they don't use that. So it's a question. Anybody have an answer or a consideration? Sorry. Yeah, so our plows always go to the right. Um, I definitely understand what you're talking about on Park Avenue. Um, that would mean shifting it to the left, I guess, technically, or trying to put it on top of that medium there. Um, it's just, that's just the way all the plows are faced um, and not really, pop. that means you would have to switch it out when we're on Park Avenue and then switch it back out when we go down another street. 
which is not really um, feasible for us to do. As far as snowblowers go, um, that is a great idea um, and a very interesting idea. Have to see if that's something we would have the budget to to get, um, but I can definitely take that back for you and ask our uh, snow operations. Well, I think Keith and uh, Julie will give you the money. We'll help out, you can, we'll talk. <laughs> exactly. Thank you. Thanks, Evelyn. Um, who do we have next? Stephanie Recklin? Yes, thank you for calling on me. Uh, Marissa, you do a wonderful job with our streets. I, I know that you're you're down on your budget and you're probably down on the uh, uh, your staff, but, but considering that, you do a wonderful job. I have a couple of questions though. Garbage trucks in uh, used to have brooms attached to them. And when they would collect the garbage, anything that fell in the street, they they would they would broom, they would take a broom to. Is that a thing of the past? And um, we used to have black liners in our um, garbage cans on Park Avenue. And they've disappeared. I know our building um, puts them in um, the garbage cans, but many, many buildings don't. And that leads to an overflow of garbage and, of course, more rats and dirty streets. So I, I was wondering if you could do, uh, if you could answer those two questions and maybe do something about it. Uh, for sure. So with the broom, that's still on the truck. Um, that's, that's still something that sanitation workers do. Uh, if you don't see them helping to clean up a little bit of the spillage, you can let me know if there's like a large amount that's left over and that's something we can talk to the superintendent about. Of course, property owners are responsible to clean their sidewalk as well as 18 inches into the street, but understandable if a bag opens up while they were collecting and then everything spills out, um, you know, we, we, we do help clean that up as well. But do let me know if there's a really large area where that's not happening. Regarding your second question, are you talking about the corner baskets on Park Avenue, like on the street, right? I see you're nodding your head, so I'm assuming. Yes, okay. yes. I didn't know if you could unmute. Um, so if there were liners in there, that means someone adopted the basket. Um, and that means um, th there are also green liners as well that we give out. So if they're not there anymore, that means someone stopped adopting the basket. They may have moved away or they just didn't pick up new liners. Um, so we can't really, if someone, it's a free service. So if someone did that to volunteer basis, I can't go to the house and make them clean out that can and, and turn out the, the liner for me. Um, but you, if you know anybody that wants to adopt a basket, um, we can definitely help set them up and give them some liners. But if you don't see any there, it's just because no one's adopting it anymore. Okay, so we should run an adopt a basket campaign. Yes, we can totally, okay. totally help with that. If you need any additional outreach on specific blocks, you can let me know where you would like me to go. And that's something we can definitely do. I've done that in the past with a council member um, on the west side of Manhattan. So that's definitely something I'm happy to do up in CV8. Thank you so much. Of course. Yeah, thanks, Marissa. I think we would welcome that considerably, um, you know, going to the corner buildings, especially the big corner buildings, to adopt a basket, which would, would be very helpful. Um, let's go to Jerry Vinokuro. Hi, uh, thanks for uh, taking my, my comment. Um, I wanted to say a few things with regard to the Clean Curbs program. Um, you know, I, I was looking at the slide and yeah, it's very nice that, um, you know, that this is something that's that's being done. But when I look at this, I can't help but get the feeling that this is really a peaceful solution, right? I mean, this is a program with something like four or five veto points where the responsibility for putting out the, the containers is, you know, on the, uh, the, the property owners there. And it just feels like this is not, this is not a solution to garbage pickup. Um, and the, the only sensible solution, you know, for, you know, that that's been implemented around the world is, is to put like actual garbage pickup containers on every block and then have like trucks that can pick them up. Right. And, and this just, this just feels to me like cosmetics. Uh, and that's the comment I wanted to make. I'm, you know, 
I would really like to see a stronger push for universal containers everywhere that can be picked up by the trucks because everything else is just going to leave uh, garbage bags on the sidewalks. Thank you. Any comments, Marissa? No, thank you for that comment. We appreciate it. There's been a large push for containerization for residential as well as for commercial. This would be for commercial trash only. Um, so I definitely hear your point um, and that's something we're always looking for. Um, it's just about having the trucks that are able to handle that um, and having people um, follow that as well. And what does that mean in, a, in our city? Where do we put these containers? You know, it's one thing if a large building can house that and roll it out or whatever, are we taking away parking spots? There's just a larger conversation about that. But definitely this is on our radar 100%. Thank you. Uh, next we have Andrew. Andrew Fine. Hello, everybody. Thank you for taking my comments. Abigail's dad, those who aren't paying attention. <laughs> yeah. Oh, am I Abigail's dad? You are. You are not anymore. Oh, OK. Yeah. Andrew Fine, vice president of the East 86th Street Association, who has had numerous uh, positive experiences uh, with Keith's office, uh, formerly Ben's office, and now, thankfully, Julie's office. Um, I wanted to thank uh, Keith for his commitment to sanitation and his uh, really introducing the community to ACE cleaners were fantastic. They're like uh, a Swiss army knife of cleaning, uh, whatever it is, whether it's graffiti or gum on the streets or just plain trash and also watering for the record. Uh, ACE cleaners are fantastic. And thank you for that. Um, I'd also like to thank Julie for her uh, instant attention to sanitation uh, with the increased pickups on uh, basically in the district overall with four new pickup trucks, um, as well as uh, the eight cans on East 86th Street, which we had fought for, for or advocated for, I should say, we're not fighting, uh, but advocating for these cans for the last 10 years. So really, really appreciate that and look forward to uh, the continued commitment of everybody uh, in terms of sanitation, I'm excited that Billy has uh, taken the lead here uh, in the sanitation committee. Uh, in terms of what we really need, the supplemental services, whether it's ACE cleaners, Wildcats, Doe, um, Greenkeepers, they're all fantastic. And um, they're very, very efficient. And we really need them because everybody's a slob on the Upper East Side for some reason. Uh, fully in, in favor of containerization. It's essential. It's the only way we're really going to get a grip on the rats and keep them out. And that should be both commercial and residential. It makes a huge difference. We've seen um, a number of businesses like Target, uh, the, uh, what's the name of the salad place right around the corner from me? Uh, Sweet Green uh, recently did it. Makes a huge difference. Because uh, we really need to address rats. I mean, the rats, the rat holes, we, we're putting in plants on East 86th Street, and we have rats, like, eating away at the roots for all the plants. It's disgusting. Uh, it's not healthy. And we just kind of, we've been living through a pandemic. We don't need a rat, like, inspired pandemic to follow up on this. Um, I think we need to um, put together an education program for local businesses and, uh, and local buildings, but mainly local businesses, that they are responsible for 18 inches from the curb, their entire sidewalk and 18 inches from the curb. And if you talk to the larger businesses like, uh, like Starbucks or larger chains, they pretend they don't know and, and then it's filthy. Uh, we need some uh, like an education. I know Julie has done something like this uh, on other issues like living wage uh, in the past. So education is huge. After education, tickets. We have to ticket these businesses that refuse to clean up and just see it as a cost of doing business. They do it over and over and over again. And eventually, um, uh, I think there was a board member on East 86th Street who had suggested that we should uh, have like a sliding scale. If you're a major multinational corporation, a $100 ticket does not have an impact. And maybe a uh, ticket should have some basis on how much your overall revenue is as a, as a company. Um, finally, I, 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 I've 
I apologize because I have so many thoughts on all this. Um, there should be a shorter window for pickups of residential garbage. Uh, business, uh, residences, uh, buildings put their garbage out 10, 15, 20 hours before it's actually picked up. We have GPS now. We have technology now. We have to use technology to shorten that window so the garbage is on the street for a shorter period of time, uh, say, you know, between 8 and 12 or whatever, and they have to get it out between 4 and 8. We need to shorten the window because it gives rats less opportunity, less time with garbage on the street, less opportunity for rats. Um, and then finally, I have a question for sanitation. And, um, and I did ask this of the commissioner, so I have an answer on this, but it's still a pet peeve and it's multitasking. We, uh, whenever there's the threat of snow, like snow is coming Friday night. So guess what's not going to happen Saturday morning? All the garbage that's put on, on the street Friday night, and it's a big day for recycling on Saturday, all that's going to sit there for at least eight days. That's not good with rats either. Um, we need sanitation. Sanitation, now I can't blame this all on sanitation, because when I spoke to Ed Grayson, Ed Grayson said, hey, if we had the bodies, we could, we could, we could, we could multitask. We could pick up garbage and take care of the snow at the same time. So we need more funding for sanitation so that they can actually do both things, whether it's like having a, a squad or a team or a whole part of sanitation that will multitask, like say um, extra workers that will clean the streets on days that it doesn't snow. But on days that it does snow, they'll help out with the garbage removal um, or the snow operations. Anyway, uh, that's it for now. But believe me, uh, Julie, Julie will attest to this. Uh, <laughs> I have a lot more ideas where this came from. Oh, I, I have no <laughs> doubt that that is just the tip of the iceberg, the proverbial Indeed. iceberg, so to speak. <laughs> but I really appreciate you guys uh, uh, paying attention to this as an issue because it is very, very important to Upper East Sider. So thank you, Julie, thank you, Keith, and thank, thank you, you thank, thank you for everything you're doing and organizing even just the, all the cleanups uh, on 86th Street to keep that thoroughfare, important one, uh, clean, and also uh, just your advocacy on issues that are coming through the neighborhood. So we appreciate it. A lot of ideas and a lot to do. Thank you, guys. Bye. Terrific, thank you. Uh, let's go to Devanas, aka Dean Evans. Dave, I'm muted. I think. I'm sorry. Um, thank you for allowing me um, to speak. I hope I'm coming into the meeting at the correct time. My partner and I own a small rental building on East 92nd Street between Lexington and Third. Um, in the past, the Sanitation Department and Community Board 8 helped us with the situation which has started going on. We live right across mm -hmm. from the 92nd Street Y, who is now using the city street as a 24-hour um, trash storage zone. Um, they bring their green trash out hourly and leave it in the street. They leave their metal dumpsters in the street and fill them continuously. Um, right now, um, trash pickup was um, today. The next scheduled pickup will be on Friday. And this is currently the amount of trash that the Y has thrown into the street. Um, I did send a letter to Community Board 8 that Billy Friedman and Mr. Spagnoletti, if I um, pronounced it right, has some information on this. There are photographs. Um, we brought this to the Community Board originally in 2009. There was a resolution that was voted on. It was unanimous that the Y would not be permitted to use the public street as a trash storage area. This is something that started reoccurring from um, their furloughing of their employees from COVID. And I'm just hoping with Julie's help with Community Board 8 and the sanitation, we can just return our neighborhood and block back to not having a 24 hour um, trash storage area in the public street. 
So thank you so much for bringing it to my attention. Um, I meet on a regular basis with the Y. I will absolutely raise this with them immediately. So thank you so much for flagging it. And I will circle back uh, both to CB8 and to you all once I have spoken to them. Wonderful. I will forward to you, Julie, the letter that I sent um, to Community Board 8 um, that Bill and Mr. Spagnoloni, I believe, have a copy of right now. That would be great. You have my email? Yes, I do. I have, I have your assistant Hal's e um, email. Is it Hal? No. Harry? No? Harry? It, it, yeah. it could be Harry. I, I have your number. I will, I'll get your email okay, directly great. tomorrow. Thanks so much. Thank, thank you. Thank you for listening to me. Good. Thank you. By the way, the name is Kaz. Uh, Kaz, I'm sorry. By, yeah, I hate going by this Mr. Spagnoletti thing. I, um, I, wanted, I wanted to pronounce everything correctly. I'm sorry. You, you did. You did. Okay. Uh, let's go to Julie. Julie Moses. I wanted to say that everything that Andrew Fryan said, I endorse a hundred percent. It seems to me that it's a problem. The government should not be overnight on the sidewalks. It's, it should be in, contained within a few hours in the morning. And many years ago, with Betty Wallace, she, we tried to get this implemented. And it's a reluctance on the part of the buildings that don't have staff, they say, early enough in the morning. They do a three men to put out the garbage and they don't want to call them in early in the morning. Or else it's part of the borders union has to endorse this, she has to uh, accommodate the um, sanitation so that we don't have the overnight. That's primary. I don't believe that containers of a solar problem. The rats and dirt will just be now relegated to containers. So yeah. that is the most important. The other yeah. thing so I it, excuse me, to excuse me, Julie. Ju Ju yeah, we have street Excuse me, Ms. Moses. Actually, it's more like once in a month they don't show up because I, I, I'm, 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 I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not able to. Is this a, my car and yeah, I'm in poorly for anyone else? Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry, would you mind? I, I hate doing this, but Will, would you mind muting? I, because she's already muted. I, I think it's just residual. Wow. Okay, that helped. Yeah, maybe you can con we can contact her and yeah. I'm sorry about that. Um, maybe yeah, that was Ms. Moses, right, Will? Yes. Yeah. Maybe we could reach out to her if we have her email and had that put in writing because I just I'm sorry I couldn't follow it yeah um, no, because of the reception okay oh, sorry about that seeing seeing no more public members uh I guess uh, Billy will have a few questions we do do cause do you want to start with the other board members or you want to start uh, with your okay questions? that's fine uh first on the list is Barbara if we can unmute Barbara Am I unmuted? No. Yep. Yes. Yes. You are. Great. You are. Okay. I thought it was too fast. Thank you, everybody, um, for doing it. I 
um, have a couple of sanitation questions and then another in terms of the environment. Um, I'm sorry, of course, the phone never rings on this side. I'm sorry. I muted Wrong you while that was ringing. Go ahead and unmute again. Sorry, okay. Um, 86th Street in particular, I live on 87th Street, so the surrounding areas. Uh, I appreciate the more garbage pails and the pickup, and I've seen the men cleaning, and they are wonderful, but it's not enough. There are a lot of problems, uh, and I'm just going to say one thing about that worries me about the garbage pails. From what I see, some of the problems are that people go through the garbage pails to look for recyclables, and they just throw the garbage all over while looking at it. I once came back, my building is, is quite clean. I came back to my building and say, why does it look so disgusting? And the doorman in frustration said, I was out there four times. And every time I come out, they come out, go through it, and just the garbage is knee deep all over. I wonder if there's something we can do to prevent those that are um, going through the garbage and leaving the garbage on the street. That's, that's number one with it. Um, I, I'll go through number two, a lot of, so on 86th Street has changed in the 20 odd years I've been here to be from more of the mom pop and wonderful stores to either the big stores or, or a lot of empties. So we have the movie theater and so on. And uh, the big stores don't, as, as um, was said before, the big stores don't clean up after. And I certainly would be supportive of big fines for those that are not cleaning up. And I will say, I like outdoor dining. I certainly think things need to be done, but 86th Street has no uh, uh, outdoor dining and they have the garbage. So I don't think we can blame things on the outdoor dining and I hope we don't use it in that way. So that's in terms of garbage is some of the things I'd like to say. I would also say that when I hear about the bids, I get jealous. I know they would talk about bids over the many, many years that I've been involved. Um, for 86th Street, and I don't understand why there isn't. I, I know there was something, and I don't um, understand why we can't have a bid on 86th Street. I think it would make a tremendous difference, and we certainly have high-end residentials. I don't know why we can't get the commercials to meet the high-end uh, um, residential. And one other thing before I get to my next point one particular bane for me is on Third Avenue, uh, um, 86th Street, just east of Third Avenue, there's the uh, exercise place on the north side of the street. I don't know how much garbage they can have each day. There are piles and piles of garbage all the time that are there, the garbage bags that seem to stay there. And I don't, I don't know if something can be done to move that garbage a little bit more for 86th Street to make that should be an outstanding street and it's just not. So that's my problem with living on 87th Street. It goes on to Third Avenue and 87th Street also. I don't know if you want to comment and I want to go on to the next. I'm happy I'm happy to start because it sounds sure. like you're in Council District 5. So I will take yeah, the liberty of going first. Um, so your first issue you mentioned about trash garbage on the street. You know, I, I agree with I've been a big proponent of containerized garbage. I don't believe mm -hmm. we should be a city that just piles up our trash on the street. It makes absolutely no sense. I'm thrilled to be on the sanitation committee. It is something I'm going to advocate very strongly right. for that we change the way that we are actually. Uh, picking up and processing our trash. Your second issue, as you mentioned, stores, uh, you know, should be fined. So mm -hmm. Andrew Fine mentioned I'd done a bunch of advertising campaigns. I have, you know, my former work as commissioner of the Department of Consumer Affairs, we did a whole series of advertising campaigns. So one example that comes to mind is small businesses, stores that were leaving their front door open during summer months. It spews air conditioning into the environment. It's terrible for the environment. It makes no sense. So we did a campaign called Shut the Front Door, where basically, and you still see these stickers up in 
many stores. We did a whole advertising and marketing campaign and paired it with enforcement from our inspectors. We need to do this around trash. We need to raise awareness of businesses. And I'm the chair of the Small Business Committee in the council. So definitely plan to work on this to let our small businesses know that there are consequences and penalties associated with not keeping their neighborhood clean. Uh, so I think that that makes sense as well. And your last issue is outdoor dining. So to be clear, I do support outdoor dining. Um, I did sign on to that bill. With that said, I still think there are some things that need to be worked out in the bill that are a bit of a problem, sanitation issues, hours of operation, um, the design of, of the, uh, there, so there's still many issues which agency is ultimately gonna have uh, primary enforcement. So just want to let you know thoughts on that. But thank you for raising all these important okay, issues. Great. I'd like to go on to the next thing. As Billy said, um, I used to be co-chair with Cuz, and I miss him terribly. He always makes me laugh. With the sanitation slash environment committee, we've now broken the two up because there was just too much work. And I'm now co-chair with Lynn Strong of the environment committee. We're doing a lot of work and we wanted the whole series of things post Ida with other committees. The one thing that was really upsetting, and I know it's come up, is the composting. And uh, I would like a joint committee with the sanitation and environment because it's such an important environment. Uh, issue, as well as just in terms of, of trash and so on. Um, Marissa, you came to us several months ago and talked about a program that uh, sending out to buildings. I made a date with somebody on our board. I brought all of the pamphlets and the flyers along, and I convinced her to convince my building, the board, to go along with it. We're on a waiting list. Somebody said it's because we're a rich area. Is that true that we're not getting the, the composting because we are the Upper East Side and which to me is mm. not important. Why are we not getting the composting? No, I mean, I, I'll just jump in for a second. Um, sure. As I understand it, having some conversation with yes and why I can jump in after that. A lot of it was based on the demand uh, that they were receiving from different areas. And uh, I know that in um, the area sort of Brooklyn around Park Slope had a very, very, very high demand with a sort of starting point. Um, I had, and others had advocated to kind of bring it back in you know, a number of parts of our district. They started to bring it back and now they're putting on a hold. But I mean, from our conversations, trying to get it back in CBA, CB6, CB5, which are my district, uh, there was, um, it was going a bit based on demand and then they started to roll it in. But now we hit a, uh, a snafu on that, but obviously something we have to fight for as part of the budget process here. Well, we would like to, and I would like to have a joint, we're planning on having a joint meeting with sanitation, talking about composting is the main thing. The green markets need to get it reinstated. Why are the green markets can't have uh, the, comp uh, the composting brought there? Um, and, and it's something that I would like to work on and it's just extremely important and was disappointing for me that that was something that it was a budget cut when the environment is supposed to be so important. Um, if I can just add really quick, um, it definitely had nothing to do with the Upper East Side being a quote unquote richer area. Um, it really was, as council member said, just all about signups. Um, and the reason, you know, if a resident wants to sign up their whole building, they can, it has to be the super or the manager, the property manager. I think that's where manager the issue did. was. Yeah, it was our manager did it. Yeah, so that's just where some of the issue was. We had so many residents who want to do it, but if the person who's actually doing the waste management didn't sign on, you know, then we had to do separate conversations with them. So just, you know, that's why it was probably easier in Park Slope and some other places where, you know, I can say I'm doing it. If, you know, if I live in a one family, two family house, it's pretty much easier for me to sign up as opposed to signing up for a building that's 900 units or, you know, 100 units or whatever that may be. So it definitely had nothing to do with your area being too rich. It just had honestly to do with signups. Um, and now it's being paused because of the budget. So you may have been on the cusp of being able to be part of the program, but because of our budget constraints, no one and no one else is going to be part of the program as of right now. Well, Julie and Keith, will you keep us in touch with how we could come and testify and do anything else? Because I would like to pray. Yes, yeah. Barbara, definitely. And I was just going to say, I am working on some composting plans. So I don't have a specific thing to report right now, but I will soon. So would you share it with us? I would love yeah, it. Of course, of course, I will. I hear you loud and clear. I couldn't agree with you more on composting. It's incredibly important. Mm -hmm. Thank Good. you. Thank you. Um, as of, as of, uh, with regards to the bid, I'm sure Matt can take a right-hand turn uh, as he goes up Madison to take care of um, 86th Street for you. 
Um, who do we? Oh, um, we have Julie back. Uh, maybe we can unmute her and see how we go this time. Sorry, Alida. Julie, you have to unmute. Now, do you, yeah. can you hear me? No, really? it's no, still sorry. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, still okay. Let's go to a leader. Thanks, Kaz. I have a few things. One about the fines. <laughs> I agree with Andrew that businesses, even though I'm co chair of the small business committee, that businesses should be fined for failing to keep the street clean. Um, I know that, Julie, you're working hard on reducing fines to make it easier for small businesses, but sanitation is different from, let's say, in a improper signage or a display in a window or something like that. Um, second of all, dogs. I think there needs to be a big education campaign and I don't know how you enforce it, but there is so much more dog poop everywhere than there used to be. People, I don't know if it's dog walkers or owners, they let their dogs poop in the middle of sidewalks, in front of entrances to stores, disgustingly, in front of entrances to restaurants, at steps going into schools. There just seems to be much less regard for that. I see big piles, and just the thought of it right now is making me queasy, of dog poop in tree beds. I see people, and I, and I ask them not to do it, um, letting their dogs pee in tree beds, knowing that dog urine is really bad as it's acidic for trees and they have a hardened enough time in New York. Um, there's, there just is, a, is, I don't know if it's an overall lack of interest in, in social norms anymore, but the, just the amount of dog poop is, is getting to be really overwhelming. As far as the trash, if it's bad now with rats, it's going to be so much worse in the summer when there are smells and spillage and rodents and bugs proliferate in untold numbers. That also makes me queasy because I saw before the last Saturday snowstorm and the reason I know this is because there was a chair on the sidewalk in front of my building piled with trash bags. That was on Friday before the snowstorm. It was still there a week after the snowstorm. No trash had been picked up for over a week for resident and a residential block without any commercial except for a garage. Um, businesses. So that's a, a real concern is the um, is the trash pickup. And, uh, um, and I'd have to say, even though not knowing much about it containerized, because the summer, I just I just dread with um, the bugs and the and the rats and everything else. And you see rats even without trash around. Um, the numbers are, as everyone's pointed out, so big. But please do something about the dog poop. I love dogs, but I shouldn't have to worry about stepping in someone else's dog mess. Thank you. Hey, thank, thank you, Alita. Uh, so happy to talk about the fines first, which you mentioned. And yes, of course, we should not be lowering fines for sanitation. When we talk about lowering fines, it's for issues like when a couple words in a sign are wrong or issues you know, where there's no uh, safety violation, no consumer harm. Those are where we wanna give businesses time to cure the violations. You know, we are talking about sanitation, definitely not. On the dog issue, I agree. I mean, I cannot tell you the times I'm walking with my daughter where she steps in poop and it's like really upsetting. So I, I'm, I'm with you and open to any suggestions on really coming up with some campaign to address it. Thank you. Um, Valerie, you're thinking? Hi, yeah, no, no. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Um, I just want to thank all, all of our elected who understand how important sanitation issues are to our community. Um, I, I, I guess I want to step away from my role on the board and just talk a little bit from my point of view as the president of the East 72nd Street Neighborhood Association. Um, the sidewalks are incredibly filthy, incredibly filthy. And while we, everyone is appreciating the um, increased pickup, Marissa, I, I have to echo what Stephanie Reckler is saying. I am not seeing one sanitation truck with a broom. Um, I thank the people from ACE and DOE every day. I actually walk up to them and I thank them because what they are doing is the most disgusting job in the city of New York. Um, the fact that they have to clean out the sanitation uh, containers that are left open, I mean, every day, and I've been sending pictures to Julie and Keith's office regularly, the, the cans are just being left, they're being, they're being, the garbage is being taken out of them, no doubt. 
but they are being they are not being put in properly the doors are not being latched and people are trying to put garbage in them and there's garbage just going into the inside of the can the design is just it's it's inappropriate for what it's supposed to happen and you know as i was walking here uh, i listened to most of the meeting uh, via phone I was looking at the cans and I'm thinking, well, who needs really needs to get in these cans? It's just sanitation workers and the ACE people. So why can't we find a way to put some kind of lock on these things that can only be opened by the sanitation workers? Um, it would really stop people going in there, you know, for the claim that it's people who are looking for recyclables I mean, there's got to be a way there's, I mean, the city of New York can run a design contest. We must be the largest procurer of garbage cans in the United States of America as a buying entity. We have to be able to use our buying power to get a can that works for over 8 million people. It's just, you know, there's got to be some kid at Stuyvesant High School or one of our special science schools who can figure this out. I find it incomprehensible that the only answer is to move to containerization in the interim. And just by way of example, because we have all this construction on the Upper East Side, we have a lot of construction workers who like pizza. And there are pizza containers that cannot even fit in the tops of these garbage cans. So we have these guys who are trying to put the garbage in the garbage cans, they don't fit. And now there's one pizza box that blo is blocking an entire container. And I, I walk around with my gloves on and I'm literally stuffing garbage into garbage cans. And in the morning after the trucks go by, and Marissa, I put this on the sanitation guys. They are not closing these containers properly. I am kicking them back in in the morning and latching them on my way to whatever I'm doing. And I know I'm not the only one. I speak with the other presidents of the neighborhood associations and they're all doing the same thing. And um, so I really, I implore you, some kind of design contest for garbage containers, something, something's got to give here. And God bless the guys from ACE and the Doe Fund who are literally doing God's work in cleaning those containers out because it is disgusting. And the, the other thing I want to say is um, maybe, I don't know if this is in the sanitation budget, but when everybody's talking about uh, garbage campaigns, uh, um, you know, again, maybe that is a sanitation budget item. You know, what does it mean to curb your dog? I mean, we are getting a ton of complaints and I'm seeing these little green garbage bags. People are doing the dog poop, but they're just, you know, as the council member noted, they're doing it in the middle of the sidewalk. Like nobody understands what curb your dog means. It does not allow your dog to pee in front of my building. I mean, I go up to people and ask them where they live. And they ask me, why are you asking that? I said, well, I'd like to send our dogs over to your building and let them pee in front of your building the way you're peeing on my flowers. I mean, it's like, it's- it True is, New York response to the problem. I appreciate Thank you. It. Thank yeah. you, Keith. So I urge everyone, if you see someone peeing on your property, ask them where they live and send everyone in your building to their front door. And maybe they will get the message that that's not what curb your dog means. But um, but I mean, it's, it's getting really bad. And um, I also want to point out that you know, I'm a lifelong New Yorker, as Keith just pointed out by my response. And when I was growing up, it was as, you know, how do I say it? There was just a different, there's just, we are asking our, our, um, our little store owners to do a lot. Okay. They, they're understaffed right now. They've got street vendors sitting on their property and we're telling them, we go in, I go in, I say, you know, you got garbage flying all over the place. And they're like, you know, it's either we're manning the cash register and we're trying to sell goods or we're outside picking up napkins and pizza boxes and leftover recyclables. And that's sort of my lead into the recyclables. When we first started having bottles for deposit in the state of New York, it was to encourage people to do voluntary recycling. 
we have had a mandatory recycling program for most of my adult life now, which is a really long time. And I'm not sure why we need to charge rather if it's really tax revenue or what, I didn't do all the data, but why do we need to charge the five cents? Because if we weren't doing that, then people wouldn't be going through our garbage to try to pull out cans and recyclables. And we should be able in the greatest city in the country of the United States to be able to feed our poor and not have them doing recyclables to, to have a meal during the day. So I think that's another thing we have to look at in terms of, you know, people are talking about composting and all these things. And I'm talking about just stopping people from having to go through garbage to get a five cent deposit back and carry them on two sides of their, you know, uh, on their arms to a truck that's waiting. I mean, I think it's really exploitation in the worst way because the city of New York has the cans on the corner and they don't provide for recycling. So, I mean, I just, it's another thing I think we should look at. And it's very disheartening to see these people having to go through both residential garbage, even the recyclables at night, um, and, and then on, on the corner. So I really think it's a long range thing that we should be looking at. And um, I just wanna end again by thanking the people from Ace and Doe hoping one day that they make it into the sanitation department and get some fringe benefits. And that, you know, again, to thank our electeds, because I know you guys are paying close attention to this issue. So thank you very much. Wow. Thank you, Valerie. Any comments from Keith or Julie? I just want to say, Valerie, thank you so much for your advocacy. Thank you for the 72nd Street Association's advocacy. You all have been on the forefront on these sanitation issues. I agree with you. We're working on them. And, and you know, I thank you for all the great work that you're doing. And rest assured that we are going to be on it and holding. Um, uh, I, I, I hate to say this, but it's just true. You know, we want to make sure that we're holding the agency's feet to the fire. But we also have to focus on the budget cuts because with this $100 million budget cut, you, we've got a real problem. Mm -hmm. If I could just um, okay. answer two of your points, um, Valerie. So one, we actually did have a competition for a better bin um, and actually sent the link over to Will and he'll send that over to folks because of the, that was right before the pandemic hit. And then when that happened, everyone's budget got slashed pretty big. Um, so that's why that kind of been put on the wayside for now. So we did have a better bin. We had a competition. We had some really great minds. Think of something better for New York City. It is possible, it's, we have a prototype for it. It's just about actually paying for those bins to go out on the street and replace all the wire baskets that we have. So that's just something just for budget region, reasons constraints, we just can't do that as of right now. Consider um, talking about your dog, the dog's pooping. Um, I did, I am working with my social media team to see if we can do a new campaign for that. I understand not everybody is, is, follows us on social media, but that's just one part of it just to help people curb their dog and any outreach that we do in the district when we come out to do, um, cause I plan to do some adopt a basket and some business outreach, I'll make sure to bring the curb your dog uh, flyers as well. And any dog owner I see, I will pet the dog and then give them a flyer about making sure they pick up the poop. Yeah, Marissa, I just had a fo two follow up questions for you if I may. The first one is, do you actually know how many garbage cans are in the city of New York? I just wanna know what our buying power is. I would have to get that number for you. I don't know it off the top of my head. Okay. And then the other thing I'm noticing too is there's a lot more household garbage being placed at the, at the public containers on the corner. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if DSNY has noticed that, but mm -hmm. I think again, that's something that should go out to all the residential buildings especially, you know, the walk-ups that people are leaving, a lot, you know, obviously with Amazon and everything, everybody's getting a tremendous number of packages, but I'm seeing a lot of packages and, and whatnot and household garbage being left. And I'm wondering if, you're notice, if your workers are noticing the same thing. We've noticed that as well. The more we see that, that's actually a bigger incentive for us to take away the corner basket. So we really don't like to see that. Actually, that's one reason, not saying that we've been doing that. That is just one reason why we would take one away. Um, so it's, we would have to have a sanitation enforcement inspector with us, and then they can go through the garbage, see where it's coming from, and then give that person a ticket. Um, or if we see them doing it in person, we can give them a violation as well. It's just sometimes the second your back is turned, they're doing it. And if you don't know where it's coming from, if there's no 
identifying information in the garbage bag. It's it's just hard to stop people from doing that, but I'm definitely yeah, well, we're seeing that all over. I, I'm just I'm just wondering, you know, you've got your workers. I'm sure they all have their cell phones. Like, and when you pick up a package and you see the address C on it, why can't someone just take a photo of the of the label and then come back and like you could have like a little reward program or something to turn them over when you don't actually you don't have an inspector. Just something to think about. That's all. Thank you. Uh, let's go back to Alita. She, you have another question, Alita? I do. Thank you. Um, I, I wanted to just emphasize again about, um, about, I think I've forgotten what it was, about the, the dogs. And if you're having a public education campaign, the tree pits, the tree bed should be part of it because that's a different thing. People just, you're not stepping in it, but it's there. It's not good for the trees. It's it's bad to look at. It, it smells. Um, so when you're thinking of all of that outreach, the other thing is about the uh, taking away corner baskets. If people leave their household trash, that's punishing the neighborhood for people who should, who for one or two or whatever it is, bad actors. And that's really hard. I see people dropping trash. I'm sure everyone does on their way to where there is a corner basket. So when there's no corner basket, people won't hold onto anything. It's a kind of a New York tradition that you just drop whatever you're holding when you're done with it, um, which is a problem in itself and also deserves an education campaign. I think I remember the do not litter from something when I was a kid. So I'd urge not getting rid of corner baskets just because people leave their trash. And I'm wondering if there could be any kind of interaction between the traffic cops and the sanitation department, and maybe they could keep an eye out for people leaving household trash by the bins. They seem to spend a lot of time not really doing much of anything. Um, and there's certainly a lot of uh, double park trucks and stuff, which brings them to the avenues and near the corners. So when they're done writing their tickets or not doing much of anything, maybe they could watch out for household trash. Maybe there's some kind of partnership that wouldn't add to budgets, but which would keep city workers um, busy. And I, and I do have to thank all of the elected officials and the sanitation department for being here. Um, it's great to have you and to hear all of this because sanitation, I think, is something that we notice when it's not being done and don't appreciate so much when it is being done. So thank you, guys. Okay. Yeah, uh, Keith, I'm not sure if Keith or Julie remember, but Many years ago, Dan Garodnik, I thought he introduced a bill for cross-ticketing. So any agency could ticket any other uh, person violating a different agency's, uh, um, you know, violation. Is that, can that be brought back? Uh, it's a good idea. We should look at it. Um, I'll have to look at the Garodnik bill itself, but something we can look into. Thanks, Keith. Thank you. Uh, Billy, finally. Uh, thanks, guys. Uh, thanks, everyone, for the great questions. And really want to thank uh, DSNY and Keith and Julie, uh, council members, for attending uh, and for staying so long. Obviously, these are really important issues, and we've got a lot to discuss. I have a, I have a range of questions, but I want to be mindful, in particular, of the council members' time. Uh, and so maybe I'll just front load those. But it just it seems to me, listening to this conversation, one of the biggest issues we have to deal with is the lack of composting in the community district. And I was just pulling up the NYC food scrap drop-off site website, which DSNY told us that's where to look if you're not part of the curbside composting program. I'm not sure if this is fully up to date, but the only food scrap sites I see are at 96th Street and also Roosevelt Island, which I'm assuming is the Hockey Compost Collective. That only picks up food scraps every Saturday at the farmer's market. Otherwise, the entire Upper East Side is blank. And uh, the council member Powers had a bill, the CORE Act, that would have required three uh, composting or food scrap sites per community district. So I guess my first question is, is that act being uh, revived this session? Because we may want to pass another resolution as a board supporting it. And whether it's you, council member Powers or DSNY, do we have an estimate about how much that would actually cost to bring just three drop-off sites to our community district. Yeah, so um, I'll do the twice. So one is we are reintroducing that bill. We had reintroduced that bill, so it's sort of dated and required, we require every community board district to have three drop-off sites. And it actually comes a little bit out of an idea or a conversation I had with the Department of Sanitation 
of that increasing drop community drop off spots so that if your building doesn't do it or if there's a cutback or anything else, you still have that sort of local place to do it. And there's a lot of, as you might probably know, a lot of com people who composting and are willing, who are into it and will, are willing to walk that few extra blocks to make sure they're doing their part. But we really also want to keep it really convenient uh, because we know convenience with recycling and composting is the best way to make sure people do it. Local drop-off spots and also, of course, the local neighbor pickup. So we are going to be doing that bill uh, again. Uh, we're working on it to get it reintroduced. And especially in the light of the new budget information, um, we're going to have to fight the budget fight, which I've been doing the last couple of years, but also put some, some action to make sure that we have a backstop in case it doesn't, um, it doesn't work out. In, in the sort of other parts of my district where we've had some community partners, uh, in Stives and Happy to Cooper, notably, we were able to turn a, uh, or add a, um, uh, a, a composting drop off spot, spot to that area because we really had the tenants association and the management there uh, willing to help run and operate it. And it's just such a huge footprint. We're talking about, you know, uh, 25,000 people and one spot in the middle can solve a very big need. Um, the, in, in Murray Hill and East Midtown, we had community groups and neighbors that stepped forward and said, we'll also either fund or uh, help operate and or help operate a site. So at Dag Hammer School Plaza, they opened up a site and at St. Barnes Park, in my, both in my just they opened up a site too. We were helpful to kind of just connect them to the right people in the right places. Um, so that is doable, especially if you don't have um, uh, it in, you know, if you, or if you have a place. Um, we have funded some of them. They're, they're kind of get a little expensive to do the whole year round operation. So we've had to find some some help with that at, at points, but uh, we're definitely open to, if you can want to think about a location, we're helpful to try to talk to you about an operator and how to fund it. And um, I do think if we can't bring back full scale, uh, uh, you know, operations for residential pickup, maybe one program we can do in the, in the year as we scale that back up is to look for some more community options. Um, the total budget on doing my bill, I forget, uh, so I'll have to get to the number, but I'll I'll uh, I'll send it over to you. Great, thank you. And just just in why I don't know if you had a sense of the cost there, where we can certainly follow up on that. Yeah, I don't have that number in front of me. I apologize. No, no, no worries at all. Um, so we'll uh, I'm sure hear from you all and and and, and Councilmember Powers office on this. Um, I had other questions for sanitation, but just um, maybe first for Councilmember Menon. Um, and it's not on composting, but the $120,000 in funds allocated that your office allocated to additional pickups. Um, I, I was assuming, but I wasn't sure whether that was money that came from money that I guess Councilmember Kalos had left over. But my question is about being able to sort of sustain that um, over the years. Um, is that funding that we should expect will kind of continue in the years ahead? Or are you looking for another funding mechanism going forward from you know, say DSNY to fund the additional pickups? Um, and if so, would you want, say, a resolution from us or anything like that um, supporting the type of funding? Sure. So there's a program that the council has for council members to be allocating funding for these types of things. This was funding um, that had been left over that council member Kalos had not allocated. So I was able to utilize this money very quickly and allocate it. So I was very happy about that. In terms of future funding streams, you know, I will get back to you on that, you know, as we get um, a better sense of you know overall where the priorities are going to be. I'm happy to come back to the committee and, and talk about if I can make that a permanent thing or not. Um, I would expect you know honestly that I can, but I don't want to 100% commit to it until we're a little bit further along with the budget. Great. Well, we want to be as helpful as possible, and I I also wear the head as co-chair of the budget committee, and so CB8 will soon be thinking about where what our priorities are for the city budget, um, and so we definitely want to be partners. Um, Thanks, Billy. That's great. Of course. And then um, my remaining questions, and I want to be mindful, I don't want to hog the time, but I, I have to run okay. in a second, so I'm sorry. Yeah. I have to Well before you, guys, you do but... then, um Kaz, did you have any did you have any questions you want to get into Councilmember Powers before he goes? Uh, no, not really. I think the cross ticketing is the, the most important one okay, since yeah. it's yeah. from Garodnex and 
everything else, you know, we can wait. Uh, we can depend on Keith to do his job. Well, I'm taking cues from you too. So, uh, but appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Keith. Um, you're still with us, Julie. I am, but I do have a, I had a five o'clock cause I thought we were ending at five. So I'm, I'm a little late to my next thing. So I just want to, I'm happy to answer one last question but then I'm going to have to go as well. Okay. Uh, well, I guess my question with the promoting of anything that you need help with, we are here to help. Thank you. Wonderful, that's fantastic. Look, this is so exciting. I'm thrilled to have this partnership with the committee, of course, with the community board writ large and very excited to work with all of you. And I'll just say on composting, I've been since day one that I've been here on January 1st working on a composting idea. I'm not at liberty to get into the specifics because I'm still ironing some things out, but I promise, stay tuned. I'm gonna have some good news on that front. Terrific, thank you, Julie. Thank, thank you, you all, thank you so much. Thank you for inviting me today. Thanks, everyone. Well, you're welcome back anytime. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and and uh, Mar Marissa, are you okay on time? Yep. I, Kaz, if I, if I may, I just had, you know, I, I did have a handful of questions, but maybe I'll send them over to Marissa because I, I don't want to keep everyone too long. But one that I, I wanted to clarify is the building waste management plan, I think is going to be particularly relevant in our community district. Um, I was actually a little disappointed to see that it didn't, as far as I could tell, apply to existing residential buildings. It, it looks like it said new residential buildings with 150 or more units. Correct. But do you know, Marissa, does that plan include composting requirements from the buildings themselves? Actually, no, not that I've seen, no. I'm in the preliminary kind of outline that I've seen and we're still working on that. Um, I haven't seen like what you have to submit yet. That's something we're still working on internally. We have a meeting about it next week, oddly. Um, so no, it did not include composting, um, just garbage and recycling. Because I believe, I would suppose, because not every district has composting. So we couldn't really add that in there. But that, that was a question that I had myself, actually, in a previous meeting I had with senior staff. So that is something that I could, that I could also bring back. Um, and if you do have any other questions, you know, Billy, feel free to, you can email me as much as you want, ask what you need to now, you know, just so you know, I'm happy to keep digging and getting as much answers that I can for you. Well, thank you. And as some of my colleagues may be able to tell, you know, in kindergarten, I was awarded the title of Question King. So you may regret <laughs> uh, offering that. But, but I do think, you know, I'd be interested in learning more about that plan. It looks like it's a rule. So maybe there's flexibility here for us if we passed a resolution or wrote a letter we could urge that that rule, uh, I don't know, be amended or updated at some point to include composting, especially given the dearth of food scrap drop-off uh, in the district. Um, For sure. Why don't, why don't I leave my questions there and see whether there are other questions or cause if we want to move on to the uh, next item, which I'm sure we can get through uh, briefly. Yeah, one question I've got for Marissa, abandoned street side sheds. What goes on with those? Are you talking about like uh, abandoned dining structure sheds? Those? No, it's not the, with the open restaurants. I've noticed uh, a few that have been abandoned for a long time that have never been used and some are in real disrepair. Um, I thought the DSNY had a program uh, to demolish um, abandoned sheds, street side sheds. Is that so or not so? That would, uh, it would first have to go through the Department of Transportation. They're actually have jurisdiction over that program. Um, and then they would let us know if we need to remove anything or if then that onus is on the, the owner that's there. Um, but if it's abandoned, I'm assuming there is no more restaurant there, but they would let us know then if we need to remove anything. So if you do know of any, I would send it over to DOT first yeah. and we'll yeah. get you that contact. Let them know first and then, um, then they'll loop us in if need be but eventually you will remove them. Yes, if, if there is no property or, you know, if there's no one there to remove it, yeah, we, we will okay. help that. And, it, and again, one of my peak, uh, peak uh, questions, cardboard boxes, um, do we need a resolution or council uh, law to basically compact them or squeeze them or flatten them rather than put them in a bag, which take, you know, having these could take up about 30, 40, 50 percent, if not more, of less space than they actually occupy now. 
that's already a rule that you can do that. You don't need to put them in a plastic bag. If you have, let's say five cardboard boxes, you can do more than that. But if you have five cardboard boxes, you just need to tie them together and then leave them out nicely on, on the street. You know, don't just haphazardly throw it or throw it around, but just leave it next to the bins or the bags, whatever else that you have out. That's totally fine. As long as they're together, as you know, it's not just like five flattened and together. I should say that flattened and together. Okay. That's totally fine. We, we will accept them that way. But I've also noticed a lot that they put in clear bags, which takes up more room than is necessary. Can we, is it, what's involved in banning any foot, you know, unflattened boxes in a bag? Yeah, that would definitely have to be come from the legislative side. So sadly, the okay. council members left. But I would definitely chat with with uh, Councilmember Menon about that, um, yeah. only because she's on the sanitation committee. That might be yeah. where she can do the most good. Um, good is working at it from there. Terrific! Wow, day full of uh, questions and answers. <laughs> um, anybody else have any question? Okay, so where do we go from now? Take it, Billy. Well, Marissa, thank you, and I, you're welcome to, to stay, but I think um, you're also free to leave if you'd like. We've got one other agenda item, and we probably have to end around 6 o'clock. Our next item is supposed to be a discussion of our priorities for 2022. Um, I'd like us to maybe leave the floor open for maybe the next 10, maybe 15 minutes to discuss it, and then what I'd like to do at the end of the conversation is, for the committee members is I think we should pass a resolution, or at least revive our resolution supporting the CORE Act that Keith uh, Powers sponsored, um, which we just talked about. But I would bulk it up and I can talk about it more at length when the time comes. But I think it should really include a lot of the things we talked about uh, just now regarding composting and food scraps and so forth. But before we turn to that, that um, in terms of 2022 priorities, uh, anyone in the public or members of the committee, if you want to raise your hand, and talk about what is most important to you, what you'd like to see this committee focus on. Um, we will be meeting frequently and hopefully we'll be using those meetings to uh, spend more time on these very specific issues. Uh, so I see Barbara Rudder uh, has her hand up. Barbara. In terms of composting, I wish we would spend a little bit more time with it. I am somebody that does not think it would work if we just have two or three in, you know, in the the couple of miles of community board eight. Right now you mentioned 96th Street. I think it's for two hours a week. And I will tell you, I don't do composting. You know how much I care about it because I'm not walking to 96th Street and Lexington Avenue uh, between nine and I think nine and 11 or something like that on 96th Street uh, once a week. So I think that more has to be done and I think it has to be fleshed out. And I would like to talk about the environment impact since we are supposed to be working together to talk about post Ida. That is something that's a mandate from our chair. I do think that we have to keep hounding on streets, on garbage pails. I, didn't, I, I, I knew that Valerie was going to say some of the things I was gonna say about the garbage pails. The doors are never closed. Uh, the garbage is disgusting. Um, we do have so much more transportation in, on the main corridor, such as 86th Street, that it does cause that much uh, more garbage. And I think we do have to spend more time talking about it and pressing for bins. This is an extremely important thing. Um, and in terms of the dogs, I agree with that also. And uh, for those of us that went to my least favorite meeting, I think we had cause, I'm sorry, but it was the rat troll because the rest because I can't look at rats um we found out that dog poop is what's um feeding the rats rats love dog poop so um everything is interrelated and we do need to talk about that and we do need to define what curb your dog means and have some sort of thing so there's a lot of priorities all about sanitation but it's very important and the environment okay great thank you Barbara this is a really great point. Anyone else want to raise your hand to chime in about what you'd like to see this committee focus on this year? Valerie, no comments? Yeah, I think Valerie, it's... Oh, yeah, no, I'm she sorry. didn't have... Oh, yeah, she does. Yeah. 
Well, I just, well, thank you, Kaz. <laughs> um, I just want to say the committee's off to a great start. And, you know, this is a really important issue. And I think this is one area where we can be very helpful in terms of community education and outreach. And, you know, I think Barbara made an excellent point about the dog poop. And I think if people understand that their actions have, you know, consequences in their own neighborhoods, um, you know, we can we can do a lot of the work ourselves in, in terms of, you know, getting the buildings to cooperate and, and for people to understand what is actually happening in the neighborhood. And also, look, you know, if you've got a store that isn't cleaning up, then, you know, people should react to that. And, and, and you know, it's really, I heard, I think it was Barbara who said she's jealous of the bids. I mean, as great as that is, I don't think we should have to have a bid to have a clean sidewalk. Mm -hmm. And it should be, everyone should be in, interested in having a clean sidewalk. And um, so I think we can appeal to the best instincts of Upper East Siders to do that. And, and the community board, I think this is one area where we can have a real positive impact. And, you know, I really appreciate Kaz and Billy taking the lead along with the environment committee to do that. Uh, I think it's, it's really important. And it's definitely something I have to say, I can't wait to go back to my office on March 1st because I'm tired of kicking those cans back into those receptacles. It's really, it's really a horrible thing. And, you know, look, when you go into CVS, tell them, you know, hey, your outside is really dirty and, you know, your pallet plastic is flying all over the place, you know, do something about it. Um, you know, you, you have to, you know, you don't have to be as honorary a New Yorker as I am, but, you know, you can assert your residential rights to uh, have the sidewalk be clean and to have people recognize that people are noticing it and everybody has a stake in it. Um, you know, there, there are some neighbors that are, the only other thing I want to say in terms of like, we're expecting this huge snow. Um, I mean, I've also noticed that the stores, especially the big, the big stores are very slow to start their snow cleanup um, when the snow comes down. And that's a real issue because they have a lot of square footage, you know, into the street of 18 inches. And when they don't clean up around, the, especially when they're on a corner or they have a huge swath between their entryway and the seven windows that occupy the store, that's a lot of, um, well, from them, I mean, as speaking as a lawyer, that's a lot of liability that they should really be invested in cleaning up. And I don't know how we can encourage that. Um, but that's, I mean, I, I thought the law was that you don't have to start cleaning up until eight hours of the snowfall, but I think that should be a lot quicker. But anyway, those are things I think we can do, but thank you for asking. Yeah, I think with education, you know, thinking about it, uh, children are the best educators of adults. If we can get with the education department and try and get the children educated, then they can pass that on to their parents, which would you know, help us. Okay, um, Billy, that's all your, your next. Yeah, well, I think we've got... Um... Why don't we turn to Stephanie Reckler, who's a member of the public, before we go back to board members, if that's all right. Stephanie? Yes, yes. Can we promote training, rat training? I attended the three-hour rat academy. It's a free course. I don't know if any of you have heard of it. Um, I didn't make it through all three hours, um, but our superintendent did. And I suggest that you know, that's an easy education tool. Any thoughts? Yeah, we've had the RAT uh, Patrol or the uh, DOH come um, at a community board meeting several years ago. And then I think we had a Zoom one, but we can always get one, you know, we can always get them to come back. They're more than willing to always come back before us. Uh, yes, but it's an online course. I mean, you, you don't need anybody to come talk to you. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Maybe we, are, we, we can uh, blast that um, the link I'll to... I'll send you the link. Terrific. Thank you. It's in the chat for everybody. 
Yeah, the link's in the chat. And, and one thing um, I'm hoping that we'll be doing over the coming uh, month or two is using our website and our sanitation committee landing page to collect the most useful resources for people. So one of which would be the Rad Academy link, but also you know how your uh, business can apply to be part of the Clean Curbs program, or you know where your local composting sites are uh, to the extent <laughs> there are any, right? But other useful sanitation links that there's sort of a one-stop shop for the community, both in terms of education and action. So, um, so thank you for raising that, Stephanie. I think that's a great point, and we'll make sure to publish uh, that widely. Um, Alita, you're up next. Thanks. Um, in in terms of of um, education, I'm wondering if we could do some kind of contest because graphic description of the problem between, I'm sorry, I'm fixated on this. I was out this afternoon and really appalled at the tracks of dog poop over the sidewalk. Um, something about, I, and I didn't know this, about dog poop and rats and that the rats are eating it. And if we have a graphic portrayal of that, a picture speaks a thousand words. So there are colleges and high schools and talented people in the neighborhood. Maybe we could ask for submissions, not just for that problem, Problem, obviously, but for things like recycling or um, or encouraging people to do composting or using the litter baskets or or something, and then um, and and I think one of the issues should be the the point that Valerie raised also about the the correlation between the people taking recyclables and a need to feed people because I think I will never forget this, and it was. It was so many years ago that um, I was I was walking from the supermarket and there were two guys standing in front of the drugstore that's next to the supermarket. And one of them had been talking to his friend about how he collected so many recyclable bottles that he was able to buy himself a tuna fish sandwich for dinner. And I found that so poignant in a neighborhood where appetizers are $15 and glasses of wine are $15. And he was talking about a tuna fish sandwich from collecting those bottles. Um, it just, it really struck me. And so clearly we can't stop or maybe shouldn't stop people from being able to collect and recycle those bottles until there is enough, not only opportunity, but knowledge about places to get fed so that, or, or places to get meals. I, I don't need, want to sound patronizing, but so that people are provided for, because I do, I see exactly what Valerie described, people with bags larger than they are just stopped. And sometimes if I'm nothing to think about, which is hardly ever, I'm thinking about how much money is in each of those plastic bags and what it means to people. So I think they're they're just as, as um, Valerie very aptly pointed out, really tied together. And so maybe that's something. Um, and then maybe also a way, uh, I, I guess I might as well just ask you now, Valerie, if it's something that we could do with small business and work with sanitation on how small businesses, what the rules are for cleaning up because I think there is an issue with the snow and maybe you want to at some point have <clears throat> some kind of resolution about the city law that says I thought it was they don't have to clean up until the snow stops and that could be 12 hours or 15 hours I don't know what the rule is but it, but I don't know that everyone who runs a business knows either so so maybe there's something that you guys could do about that thank you yeah, do we still have Marissa on there I think it's so many hours after it stops she left, but I can look it up while you're talking. So it's if it's after it stops, then that's that could be an entire day sometimes if the snow is just trickling down for hours and hours. And it is really dangerous, not just because of corners where the the snow accumulates, doesn't go down the drain, but um, but because you you just can't get by on the sidewalk and people compact the snow and it turns to yeah. ice, and maybe it's worth asking about changing that. Yeah, definitely. Um, okay, Valerie, I have a question for you. Are you taking up kickboxing? I, I just want to note <laughs> that, um, I'm just the girl from Queens, that's all. <laughs> And uh, and Will has just helpfully put in the chat um, what the rule is about uh, clearing um, the snow. If it stops falling in the daytime after 7 a.m. and before 5 p.m., it must be cleared within four hours. If it stops in the evening between 5 
p.m. and 8.59 p.m. It must be cleared within 14 hours. If it stops overnight, that's 9 p.m. to 6.59 a.m. It must be cleared by 11 a.m. And we'll, that'll be another link, I think, that we'll probably end up putting on the committee page um, that will yeah. be helpful for people. And to Alita's point, just want to say, I, I do agree, you know, a lot of people don't know what curb your dog means. And I think, you know, people for years have talked about some sort of educational campaign to actually help people better understand it. I haven't yet seen a good idea, but I'm all for contests to encourage better ideas. I would also love to see the um, Link NYC signs actually maybe used to this effect, um, because no matter what you think of them, I, I personally find them eye-catching and I learn a lot from them. And they could be a great demonstrative for, hey, here's what curve actually means. You could get a visual, you could get a GIF, you could have a QR code that people could actually go to to actually understand what it means. So those are my thoughts on the educational aspect of it. Um, I, I just want to be mindful, you know, we're almost at quarter to six and I, um, you know, before we go back to Barbara, I, I just want to share, you know, what I thought was, um, you know, some of our key priorities going forward and then we'll go to Barbara and then hopefully we have time to talk about a resolution. But, you know, I'm very fixated on composting because I think that there's a real dearth of it in the district. And I think it's something that we can um, actually accomplish. So, for the you know 2022, hopefully getting more food scrap sites, but perhaps more substantively or structurally becoming the third community district in Manhattan to have curbside composting, I think would be a real accomplishment for us. Another goal is uh, being a vehicle to help uh, businesses and perhaps residential buildings, even if they're not yet officially part of the program, learn how they can apply for a clean curb type um, uh, pilot program where you take a say a parking space or whatever, right outside your building and use that for garbage drop off. And then a fourth and final goal for the year, I think is improving our trash cans, both the, the regularity of trash pickup, but also looking at what does a better trash can look like. This is something Barbara that you started mentioning when you're talking about the, the garbage bins on the street. So I'll leave it there in terms of my thoughts on priorities. Why don't we um, go back to Barbara if you have some further comments. I'm sorry to take it. I just have to also comment on Valerie. Valerie, I'm a girl from Brooklyn and I have tried to move those things in and I can't, you're obviously much stronger than I am. When it rains and the water gets into those things, you can, I don't know how you budge them, but I can't. So I guess Queens, Queens one ups Brooklyn at this point. Um, the other thing is just for the dog thing to add to a leader, whatever. Another bug is urine. It smells. When it gets hot, it smells. There is no reason why people can't walk not only with a, a pooper bag, but a, a something of some sort of cleanser to clean. But if they curb their dog, it wouldn't be as important. If they went to the curb rather than the middle of the street, it wouldn't be important. It is disgusting the amount of urine that's around, but the dog's urine is around at this point. So that's my two points. I'm sorry to take the time. No, thank you. Thank you, Barbara. Um, Dean Evans has his hand up. I think. Yes. Hey, thanks. Just, just a quick question. What would be the recommended solution to clean your sidewalk with to help reduce um, dog urine? I've tried using um, outdoor bleach that I've got from Home Depot and ended up having to pay for a passerby's clothes that you know some of the bleach splattered on. So I mean, I'm I'm trying all different things just to help to control that odor, but I'm not sure what would be the right solution to use on the sidewalk. Yeah, I have to tell you, I don't know the answer, but um, why don't we try to get it for you? So we'll make a note to reach out to. Maybe if DSNY is the best. Yeah, I think place we can reach out to DSNY and ask them if they have a recommendation. Yeah, and Matt I know was shaking, your email, so. Yeah, maybe Matt was shaking his head. Maybe nope, he knows. Matt, Matt probably knows. He's a smart guy. Not, not that I'm so smart. I just follow what the Glean team does, but we use bleach. bleach yeah, I, I've tried. I've tried bleach, I've tried ammonia, I've tried mixing a few things in it. It's hard to do it, you know, and try to do it early when there aren't a lot of people out. And then I worry about dogs walking on the sidewalk while the solution's there, while you're letting it sit there. So, I mean, it's, I'm, I'm always trying to do something just to help keep that, that odor down. Yeah. 
No, we just use water. The other thing is just using a power washer and to spritz it. But it, that, that's, that's, I don't think it's any deeper than that. Okay, thank you. Well, if there aren't any further comments, um, and I know we have another board meeting, the Rules and Bylaws Committee meeting at 6.30 tonight. So um, I'd like to propose a resolution on composting and the CORE Act and uh, speak to it if there's a second. Yeah, why not? I'll second it. Okay, fantastic. So this will be pretty simple. This would be very much like our resolution last year, supporting the CORE Act, which is a bill uh, sponsored by Councilmember Powers that calls for uh, three composting drop-off sites, food scrap drop-off sites in every community district. But I would want to add to this and have this resolution express uh, our desire for curbside composting to be brought to uh, community district eight um, and urging, um, our you know, representatives to support this, to, urging DSNY to fund it in the mayor, to fund it uh, in the upcoming budget. Um, essentially, uh, and, and then finally, I guess, uh, while I'm thinking about it, if everyone agrees, maybe calling for the, uh, the building waste management plan to include uh, composting um, requirements for uh, buildings. Okay. And specifically, and I suppose I, I don't want to get too creative here. I mean, I wouldn't say expand the building waste management program beyond the buildings it already applies to, but it would, so I would maybe just keep it to the buildings to which it applies, which is primarily new buildings. Any comments? Barbara Rutter. I certainly would not support it if it didn't include the curbside. I would like it to be stronger than that. You know, we require recycling. I don't know why we can't start requiring it. And uh, I would like the language to even be a little stronger. I think it's very important. And I think once we start doing it, just like no, not everybody recycles, but more and more people are recycling. I think that once we get started, there would be education, maybe add an education piece of how to do it. and. Um, I would like language to be a little stronger to say that the build maybe, I don't know if we can mandate it, but that building should certainly be encouraged uh, in a stronger language is what I would say. I think it's very important. I think so, Billy will come up with uh, appropriate language. Yeah, I, I'm happy to. I mean, it, it's, I'm not sure whether we could mandate. I don't know either. It, with some buildings, but um, let's, Think about it and uh, and put something together, kind of in that spirit, at least. Anybody else? Okay, so let's have a vote on Billy's. Uh, anybody voting no, abstaining, or not voting for cause, which I can't imagine. Uh, raise your hand. And who do we have? Myself, Billy, uh, Valerie. Wait a second, you, yeah. Valerie. Um, I'm going to abstain. Thank you. Okay, okay. so start again, cause. Yep. Yeah. Would you like to read the the members present? Oh, I can. I can too. Uh, Billy, Cause, Alita, Barbara, Rudder, Lynn, Strong, Valerie, Mason. Did I miss anyone? So it passes. Well, Good. Okay. Any old business? Did you have something else, Billy? I don't have anything else. Any old business? New business? Anybody adjourning for dinner? Valerie. Great. Thank you, Valerie. Okay. Meeting adjourned. Thank you all. And um, thanks for attending this short session. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for it. Bye.